Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I hope all of you are doing well. If you are new to my channel, I would like to request you to hit the subscribe button on your screen and stay tuned to all my upcoming content. In today's session, I will show you how to configure a simple UI screen in Pega. If you have been following my previous sessions, then you must remember that I have already done the basic setup for the case type, like you can see on the screen. But I have not created any UI yet. So in today's session, I'll be try I'll be creating the UI for this particular step of my case type. Okay, so let's get started into development. So how do you start with configuring the UI? First, let me run the case type and let me show you how exactly the screen looks like as of now without the view being configured. So I just ran the case type, and if you see, I'm seeing this message like this. The enter student detail step in the training case type does not have any view defined. So once we successfully configure the flow action in the sections, right, then you should be able to see that here um, our UI will be shown. This message will be gone. So let us try to do that. So everybody has their own way of uh, moving into the development of doing the development. I uh, personally follow old school approach. So how I do is um, I will click on actions and open the case type rule. That is PY default. Once I have the case type rule, I go to the stages tab and then from here I pick the flow name. So in our case, the screen that we are trying to configure is in our first stage, which is the enrollment stage. So if I parallelly show you the case type, so in the enrollment stage, I will have a flow and inside that flow, I will have an assignment shape, which I'm trying to configure as part of this session. So I'll go back to the case type rule from the primary stage. I click on the primary stage and scroll down. So I'll be able to see the flow name from here. So once I open the flow, so the flow opens for me. So if you see right now, if I try to click on this and if I try to click on the open icon, this will not, this flow action is not existing and this will not open the flow action room for us. Rather, it will create, uh, it will give us a create form. So let me click and show you. So if you see, this is the new form, the create form, and it is asking me to create the flow action. So. Either you can do it from here, you can create the flow action rule, create the section rule and then try to add components to the section or if you want, you can also do from the um, case type or the case designer. So let me show you that also. If you want to create the flow action in sections from the case designer for a particular step, so all you have to do is you need to click on the step on the right hand side, this particular screen will show up wherein you need to click on the configure view button once you do that okay if you want to add fields directly on the ui um you can do so from here okay by choosing some existing fields or choosing some of the existing views that can be done or if you want to create a new property and then show it on the ui so you can do that by using the add add field uh, link that pega gives us for now, I just want my flow action and section rule to be created. Content, I will add at a later point. So for that, all I have to do is I will just hit the subject button. Okay. And then I will save. Okay, then let me reopen the case type. Okay, let me refresh it once. Let me close all other rows and now let's try to see the flow. Same flow and again, I will try to open the connector and this time let me try to open from here. So now you see the flow action has already been created for me. And similarly, if I try to open the section, so the rule is ready, but the content is not there. So content I will add at a later point. So I would like to reiterate again from the case designer, if you want to create the flow action in the section rule, you just have to click on the step. You have to click on configure view and you have to hit the submit button. So the flow action in the section rules will be created at backend. And later you can add the content, whatever you want to show on the UI onto the section rule. Okay. So now let's go to the section. So the UI that I am trying to build is initially we will give a checkbox control and we will ask the user if you are an existing um, user or not. If you are an existing user, then there will be a set of actions that needs to happen. And if you are not an existing user, means you are a new user, then you need to pin up a form wherein you will enter your uh, student name, student age, 
location and so on. We will give some fields. Um, if you have seen my previous session, you must remember that we have already created a data type called student and inside the data type, we have certain fields, which is age, email, phone number and student. So if in my scenario, if the user or the student is not enrolled and if he wants to register or enroll, so I need to show them a form wherein they will enter all these details. So how do we do that? All these properties that you see, this is in my data class and the section of the UI that we are trying to build that is in the work class. So how do we link both? Okay, so that is what I'm trying to explain in this particular session. And this is something which all of us will need to know how to do it because this is very frequently used in all our projects, all the projects. Okay, so first let me try to build a simple section in the data class itself wherein all my properties are there. So how do we do that? So again, uh, creating the rule in Pega, there are different places from where you can create the rule. I will try to show you the approach that I use when I create the rule, create any rule in Pega. So I basically search for the class in which I want to create the rule in the, in the app explorer. So at present, I want to build a section in this class, which is Z core training data students. Okay. Now, I will right click on this class and I see the create menu. So section will be present under the user interface category. Okay. So I'll just create it from here. You can do it from here also by the create menu, user interface section. This is also possible. Okay. But when you do it from the app explorer, right? So if you notice the class is already uh, set because we have initiated the create menu from the class rule itself. Okay. So let me give a name to this particular section. Let's call it enter student details. Okay. And rule set, let it be in the main rule set. Okay. ID has been generated and let's create an open now. So this will be a simple screen. I'm not going to use any um, layouts and all. I'll just add four controls and I will source the four properties that I want the user to enter. Okay. So first property that we have is the student name. If you want to give a specific label to your fields on UI. So for that, you need to uncheck this checkbox. And here you can type in custom label. For example, enter your name. Okay. Something like this. Okay. Submit. Then um, let's add another control. So or let's do one thing. Let's copy this just to save time and paste it and just change the property name. Okay. Oh, so student name is done. Now age, we can call it as age. Similarly, let's copy and paste. Let me paste two times and then I'll just change the property. So since, since I'm doing the direct development, uh, this video will be a bit long. But if you want to skip any of the content, you can just uh, fast forward and uh, go to the content uh, which you are interested in. Okay. Feel free to fill that. And the last thing that I want is the phone. Okay. So let's take an example of this UI. So this is the form that I need to show to the user who is logging into my training application and creating the case for the first time, basically who wants to enroll for the first time, then they will have to enter all these details. So now this section is ready and this needs to be called from our main section, which is in the, um, work class basically. So how do we do that? So if you, if you directly try to call the section from the data layer, this will, this will not work. Okay. So you have to have a, uh, binding, basically a link between work class and the data class. So for that, what we can do is we can create a property in our work class, which will be pointing to the data class. So in this example, let us create a property in the work training. So how do we do that? Again, in the app explorer, we came to the work class. We did a right click on data model and then create a property. Okay. Let Let's call this as student details. Let's do create and open. 
Now this will be of type page. Okay, and the page definition will be my data type class. So what is my data type class? My data type class is this. Okay. So once we do this, then in my work class section, I would be able to do a embedded section, which will be in the context of this page property that we have created. So let's do an embed section. Instead of the page context as the current page, I will use the page context as the clipboard page. I will give the data type class and I will give the property that I just created, which is student details. Now, if you see, it will show me the section from the data class. So if you see the section that we just created in the data class that I am able to embed. As it save it, now let's try to refresh this case type or Let's try to create a new case, training case. Okay, why am I saying this blank? This is because we are trying to call a section which is in data layer from a section which is in the work layer on a page which we have not initialized. So we need to initialize this clipboard page which is student details. So how do we do that? So in the flow action, let us add a pre-processing action. Initialize page. Okay. And in this data transform, let us try to just initialize the student details page that we have created. So it's a page. So we will give update page dot student details. And let us try to set something like py node some OOTB property to blank. So what this would do is this would actually create the page student details and keep it ready under the PY work page so that our section can load. Okay. Now let us try to save the flow action rule. Okay. Let me try to create the case again. This time you see all the details, all the fields that we have created that is visible. So this is how you call a section which is present in the data class from your work class. Okay. Now let us try to add a checkbox also before this, before displaying these fields, wherein we will display these fields or form only for a new user. We will not display this form if it's an existing user. So for that, let me go back to the main section that we have over here which is in work class and let us try to add a checkbox. So checkbox will be under the pickers category. And uh, let me pull it up. Let us try to give a property name. I've not created any property. So I'll just create it right away. New user. I'll name it new user and I'll create it from here. So this has to be in the work class, which is correct. And this type has to be a checkbox called a boolean because it will, it will either be true or it will be false. Okay, so where do I have the true false? Okay, so we have a category true false over here. I'll select that and save. Now in my section, let me, um, yeah, let me give a caption. Are you an interesting user? Okay, this is my caption and submit, save. Let's go back to our, no, this is not the case. Let's, actually let's create a new case. Okay, so if you can see this checkbox is coming, are you an existing user? So now I need to add some conditions onto my section so that these four fields are visible only when this checkbox is selected and if it is unchecked, I don't want to display these four fields. So how do we do that? Let's go back to the section. Okay. So the property that we have is new user. So when the checkbox is selected, so the value that will be set in this property will be true. So the other section, which we have to conditionally display, we will open that. And if you scroll down, there will be a visibility option so here it is selected as always we will make it conditional so how you if you want you can create a when rule also i will not create a rule now i will just give an expression okay if new user equal to equal to true 
okay so if that means if the previous if the previous checkbox which is new user is selected only then you display this otherwise you don't display this okay it's filled out save and in this checkbox we need to add a refresh okay so on on change refresh if you don't do this then once you check or uncheck the checkbox right the original section or the main section will not refresh and this when expression that we have added will not trigger so we need to add a refresh on the checkbox also so if you see initially this is not selected that means it is false and my below screen below section below embedded section doesn't show off now let us try to select and see what is happening if you see i selected the checkbox and as soon as i selected my embedded section also displays if i again and check it is working as expected okay so in this session we saw how to build a simple ui how to call sections conditionally based on certain properties values and we also saw how to call a section in data class from the work class so these are some of the things that i was able to explain you in today's session in upcoming sessions i will try to enhance this ui and we will see what needs to happen if it is not an existing user okay in that case what needs to happen Actually, uh, this label has to be other way around. I just realized um, it is not an existing user. We should be asking, are you a new user? If yes, only then we need to show the form. If not, then we will have a next steps that needs to happen. So let me just go back to the section and update this label so that it makes more sense. Okay. So since I'm doing the development on the fly, so as usual there will be small mistakes here and there but i hope you guys are able to follow the content and the stuffs that i'm trying to explain okay so now if i refresh let's refresh it once let's log okay so now what is correct are you a new user yes then you enter the details if you're not a new user then we will configure some other ui for an existing user okay I hope the session was useful. If you like my videos, please subscribe to it. And I'll be coming up with some interesting sessions shortly. All right. Thank you so much for listening in. Have a nice day. Bye.